<laughs> Mr. Ed here on a chilly second day of spring 2022. That's right, today is March 21st, the second day of spring. And if you can tell by what's in the back of the van, I got it loaded up because we're going to be trying to make splits today. Charlie and I, come here, Charlie, get in here. You can sit right here, Charlie. I had to come this morning. <laughs> yeah, he's got to go to work. Charlie and I have been trying to do our splits for the past three weeks. We've we've gone out on uh, three separate times, and because normally our bees are ready to start swarming right around middle of February, end of February, that's when they begin start. This year, it's just been so weird. So, like I said, we've been doing this for three weeks, going out checking. They're, they just haven't developed. Um, the numbers of bees are still small, uh, but there has been, you can see, we've seen an increase in the number of bees. There, each time we went, there's more bees, there's more bees. So now, I, in fact, I got, yesterday I got two swarm calls. Charlie, how many swarms you caught already? I've got one swarm for sure, and probably by the end of this day, I'll probably have another swarm in my boxes. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's on right now. And what we're getting ready to do is to make our splits. The whole theory, at least for me, behind why I do splits is because I don't want my bees to swarm. I want to capture my old queen, move her off the hive, because I have found that in most cases, most of my honey, which is what I'm after, comes from my old queen. If, if I allow the bees to swarm, it's always going to be the old queen that leaves first. So by Getting the old queen, moving her off, I, in, in essence, do my split. By doing the splint, I'm making a swarm. I'm taking the old queen off of the hive, moving her to a new place, and then that way they're not going to swarm and I won't lose my honey. When I began Abbey Honey 11 years ago, it was, it was with the goal of always being able to have honey in the Abbey gift shop all year round. And so through the years I've been progressively building up so that I could attain that goal which was I was hoping to get about 400 gallons a year if I had that that's we could we do that we did more than that yeah so but we I never knew what the point was of, of reaching that goal so we wound up two years ago with 6,000 pounds 6,000 pounds and Charlie and I just worked entirely too hard so last year you know, we might be old and dumb, but we at least we're getting a little bit smarter maybe in our old age. We decide we're going to have to scale down because we don't want to work. Charlie don't want to work this much. I'm, I'm, I don't I'm, I'm retired. <laughs> this is it. So, so last year we started scaling down. And now I don't know the exact number of hives that we have, but it's somewhere between 100 and 120. Somewhere in that number, which is where I want to be. But we're going to be doing splits, so it's going to rise up again but not every hive is it's going gonna to produce yeah it's not gonna be able to be large enough to split so that's always just something that we have to find out as we go but we did do one split uh, last week and we had to change some equipment on on one of the box and as I'm changing the frames it had so many buku buku bees in it and by chance, the queen was in that box, so we did a split right then and there. Queens, we're gonna go take a quick run in the back and check on that one hive, and then we're gonna hit on the road. By the grace of God, by the end of today, we got enough to do 20 splits back here. Um, I don't know, I don't think we don't have time to do 20 splits, but by the end of the day, we, we'll, we'll get some of them done, some of our yards done. I hopefully, hope so. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to hit at least three, if not four of our yards. Ready to go uh, do some splits? Yeah, I guess we are. Let's go wrangle. Let's do it. This is the this is the hive that we split, and I put another super on because there were just so many so many bees in the hive, and when you do the split, when you take that box with the queen in it and you move her off, any field bees that are in that box, they're going to return to the home box, and so for that reason, I decided because there were so many bees to add another super to it. And now we're going to see if that theory was right. See if how many. See, so right away, look, if we've got all these bees in this second box already, it, it was a good move to put that 
second box on here because the one box wouldn't have been able to contain all those bees. Now what I'm going to do is this box, it was, it was an old brood box. It had drawn out old comb in it. So they can get into using it the right way. But what they're going to do first, they're going to clean all those cells out. They're going to clean it all out and then it'll be ready. But ready for what? They're queenless. So they're going to either put stores in that or it'll just be ready for, for when the queen that they hopefully have made in that bottom box, when, when she emerges, then she'll have another place to start laying. And while she's laying, they can still start storing up honey and pollen in that top box. So I'll pop this top box off. Now I'm just going to set it on the side because I just need to go in this bottom box to see if they made emergency cells. So what are emergency cells? Maybe I should have smoked them because they're coming out hot. But you can see, look at the bees in this box. And this is a queenless hive. This is a queenless hive. Because we've removed the queen. She's in another box. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to go through these 10 frames, or at least a few of them, and I'm looking for the emergency cell. Now the emergency cell uh, are made when a hive is queenless and they take a, a egg, a larva that is young enough, they'll draw out a cell and they'll make another queen. And they call those kind of queens emergency cell queens. So we're going to go through these frames. And like I said, I didn't smoke these bees, so I'm, I'm just got to be a little bit careful. To. And what I'm looking for are swarm cells. Not swarm cells, emergency cells. These little frame holders are awesome. They'll hold your, your frame while you work the hide to give you enough room to start pulling out the frames. These are, these are just have nectar on them. I can feel they're heavy. So they got nectar on them. You saw that other frame had pollen. Now, this frame I see there's old brew, but so this is where you may find one of the emergency cells on frames that had, oh, look at that. Look at that. Those are emergency cells. Look at that. These are beautiful cells. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them on this frame right here and that's just on one side of it and look at look how you think that queen had a pattern this queen is awesome she really is so that's six of them on this one frame now emergency cells are not like swarm cells these queens when the first one of these queens comes out she's gonna go and she's gonna kill all the others so I don't care all these cells are beautiful really nice looking cells so whatever queen comes out of here she's going to be a good one and we already know that the genetics of this queen are awesome just from this sheer number of bees that are in here so we're going to pull this frame and the next one to see none there none there <laughs> That's it. I don't need to see any more. That's good enough. We know this hive is going to be queen right in just a matter of days because it's already been seven days since we've done this. So in another three days, that queen is going to emerge. We've got enough drones already in our boxes, so I know she'll get mated successfully. And these bees are going to be making us some honey this year. All right, so we're going to close this box up and we're going to head over to our St. John's yard. We're in our St. John's yard up in Folsom. And I want to start with this box right here because 
in our last outings this box had really a lot of bees in it so I'm really thinking that we're going to find swarm cells in this box I really do the way I check um, for swarm cells is I simply will take the second box split it and lift it up and I'm gonna look underneath it because what I found for the most part our queen is moved up into our top box and this is where she's laying primarily she'll she'll go down to the bottom box too she goes up and down but primarily she's gonna stay in this top box and so for that reason that's generally where our swarm cells are gonna be is in our top box <laughs> Now just looking at this, and I can see pretty good in here, we've got cup development. You can see they've drawn out cups, but there's no there's no swarm cells as of yet. So this hive, it's not ready to get split yet. So I'll close this one up and we'll move on to the next one. Again, these bees, they're, they're, they're developing, but there's nothing here yet. So we'll close this one up and move on. All right, same thing. The number of bees are here, but it's just not... Now, I got one cell. No, there's nothing like that. Next. Yeah, these bees are a little bit upset right now. <laughs> Went through 11 boxes and not one swarm cell. So they're, they're coming along, they're developing, but it's just not time yet. So we're headed up to Enon, which is our St. Mary's yard. And I know when we were there last time, oh my gosh, that, 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 was, that place had a lot of bees in it. So hopefully we'll find some swarm cells up there. Let's head up to Enon. All right, we're at our St. Mary's yard up here in Enon. And this is up in the woods, folks. This is really up in the woods. I know what's going on with these girls. Look at that, we got swarm cells, baby. Look at this. That's one, that's one, that's one, that's two, that's one. Yeah, so we're, we're good to go. Now, what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is what I, I really like this method of, of doing swarm cells. And I'm, I'm gonna need my little fillet knife for that. So let me go get my knife and I'll be right back. Here's the method that I've kind of developed to remove these swarm cells without damaging them. And I use this fillet knife. And the, the trick in removing swarm cells is that you don't want to remove any of the wax and expose the larva inside of that. So what I do so I take my fillet knife and I come a little bit, I'll go below it because then it'll work up. I come below it and I cut my frame. And I'm, I'm cutting the wood. And by cutting the wood, I don't have to worry about damaging the cell. Now look at that. Perfectly removed swarm cell. Now I'm going to take the rest of these swarm, uh, swarm cells off and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with them after that.
All the rest, this one was a damaged one probably when I opened it up. There's something in here, but it's not capped, so I'm not interested in it. There's lots of cups. I'm assuming my queen is in this box right here. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to take my flashlight and I'm going to shine my flashlight between these frames. Now, if you can see from the camera's view how thick the bees are inside of that. And there's always a chance that they've got swarm cells on the faces, but you know, to me, it's worth the risk of not pulling the frames and disturbing them. And right now I'm gonna cut out all the rest of these cups right here, and we're gonna set this box on the new stand. We have one, two, three, four, five, six viable cells right here that we're going to make splits using these. So let's get back to removing those cups and moving that box. Now all of our cups are removed and we're going to go ahead and set this box on our new Oh, it's a heavy box. Right, so this, we're going to use this frame to put our swarm cell on. Now lay it on my box. I'm going to clear a little spot on the frame, move the bees off of it. I take my hive tool, press all the way down to the foundation, and scrape up. I'm clearing a spot, is what I'm doing. Now I got my spot in there. And we're going to take two of these cells. One of them is an uncapped one, and one of them is a capped one. And now we're just going to press these cells into that old wax. That's right in there. See how that is in there? This isn't this is part of that cell right there. So we're gonna put another cell in here as well. But that cell is, is a very good cell. We'll do the same thing right here. And the reason I clear a space is so it imitates a superseding cell. On the safe side, we're going to put this cell in there. And that's already ruptured, so let's look at that one. See, there's the larva right there. I'm going to press that right into the wax and cover it up a little bit. 
make sure it sticks. And there you go. We got two cells in there. That's enough. We'll get a queen out of that. So look at that. Like superseding cells instead of swarm cells. So what's the difference between cells? They're all kinds of cells. Three different types. Swarm cells, which these are, because they were on the bottom. Superseding cells, which the bees make on the face of the frames, that will become the new queen from the hive. And then, like we had this morning, the emergency cells on that other hive. So those are the three types of cells. And I know that queen is in our other box. And even if she isn't in that other box, there's plenty of larvae in there, eggs in there for them to make another queen from. So in either case, if she's in here, fine. If she's not, we got two cells in there. So these guys are going to be queen white as well. So now, close this thing up and we're going to move on to the next one. <laughs> Now that is the end of a long day. We started this morning, it was eight o'clock. We pulled out of the Abbey and we rolled all the way to, let's see, we went to our, our St. John's yard, St. Mary's yard, St. Bernard yard, and St. Dominic and the St. Jude went to five yards today. We drove over 80 miles, no, 70 miles. Yeah. 70 miles. Feels like 100. I didn't even feed Charlie. We just worked straight through. He's been saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. So, no, we got to work, Charlie. We got to work. So we did all, all those, all those um, yards. But when we were at the first yard, the St. John yard, we, we I got my little cheat sheet book. I wrote, see, see, Fred, I wrote that stuff down. Finally, I told you, he I, put it in I, I write down when I do splits because there's no way I can track it. So we, we did the... Um, in the St. St. John yard, there's like 12 hives over there, and and none of them were really ready. None of them had the swarm cells, but I, I guarantee in another week all those will be ready. So then we went up to Enon, and we had five hives up in there. We managed to do four of those hives got split, and that's where we did we shot the video of where I'm cutting out the swarm cells, and we we did splits using all the cells up up in there, and then then we went to Talashik, to St. Bernard Yard, and we had a jar full of cells and boom, boom, boom. We split, we split. There were um, five hogs up there. We split. <laughs> and then we went to the chicken ladies' yard, St. Dominic Yard. Charlie got some eggs for too. Oh, every time. And and we were we had three cells left, and we used those, and then they had two more boxes that they were ready to be split. They had so many bees, but they didn't have cells, so we did walkaways on those, making sure that we had uh, brood, um, brood young enough so they could make the emergency cells, and we did the splits, splits on that. So it was a long, long day. Long day. Long day. Yeah. Now, when I always like what Mike Barry says about his videos. He, he does not make a how-to videos. It's how he do he does. Yeah, how he do it. Yeah, huh? how I do. <laughs> and, and that's the same thing with, with me. You know, the way I do my splits, you know, it's the way I do them. And it works for me here in Louisiana. I don't know how it would work with somebody up in Illinois, Ohio, or Nevada, or, you know, it works here really good uh, in Louisiana the way I do it. And well, well just even North Louisiana is different, it's different. Than here. It's, it's, it's different. You know, because we're right here on the we're right here on the on the lake, and we we've got marsh and and uh, swamp and all of that. So the the whole environment is different. And you really have to learn how to keep bees in your area. And that's that's really I I don't think I'm a beekeeper because the only time. I go into to our hives is during splits yeah. and getting honey. Other than that, our bees, I'll leave them alone. They, they're on their own. They do their own stuff. So, you know, it's not it's not like um, I'm doing really anything. But I do splits because I want to do honey. I need honey. So I, I do manipulate the bees in, in that sense. Yeah. So we still, we still have probably 80 hives that we've got to go through. Um, and... Our weather tomorrow is going to be really bad. We're not going to be able to go tomorrow, but for the next 
four days after that. It's going to be beautiful. Oh, we'll get it then. Yeah, we'll we'll get them. We'll get them all done uh, by then. And so I'm I'm looking forward to when that's that job's over. <laughs> I know Charlie. Is. Myself. <laughs> And then we'll be we'll be putting supers on after that. Well, soon so, after, yeah, you know, after, yeah. after our flow. But that's not too hard. You know, we just load them up and put them on the hives, and whatever happens, happens. That's it. So what else you got? That's about it. Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. We'll be making more. God bless, Mr. Red. And good time, Charlie. We're tired, and we're out here until the next video. <laughs> I'm going to take a nap.